Hello everybody. Um, for the top for this topic of the video, I'll be talking about electrophilic aromatic substitution, and um, <clears throat> there are five reactions that I'll be talking about. And it's basically these arom electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions are just substituting a hydrogen on an aromatic ring for, for example, in this case, the halogenation reaction for bromine. And so there are five reactions I'll be talking about and uh, the first one will be the halogenation and I'll be showing the mechanism for three out of the five reactions so let's get started the first one halogenation halogenation starts off with, with an aromatic ring right the reagents used are BR, BR2 FeBr3 now since it's halogenation you could also use Cl2 FeCl3 and since there are no substituents on the aromatic ring to start off with the BR can add to any carbon of the aromatic ring it's not going to discriminate at what position it will be added now the mechanism for this is pretty straightforward right a pair of electrons uh, and the bromine are going to attach to the FeBr3 you'll form FeBr4 and you have a minus on the Fe and you have a bromine with a positive charge it has it lacks two electrons okay if you do a little formal charge calculation it'll be a positive you have a pair of electrons from the aromatic ring attacking the bromine you'll form this intermediate right here where you have a positive charge at this carbon now what happens is that you have an H at this carbon and you will do an elimination reaction and form a double bond there to regenerate your aromatic ring pretty straightforward reaction and this is typically and, and it follows this mechanism always when you have either chlorine or bromine excuse me and there you have it that's the first reaction out of the five that I'll be discussing the next one I'll be talking about and don't worry if you didn't catch it uh, I'll do a little recap at the end a little review, uh, review of all the material I've discussed the next reaction I'll be uh, discussing is nitration okay nitration and and this is one of the reactions that I said that I'll not be discussing the mechanism for this and sulfonation are the two main uh, reaction I'll not be showing the mechanism for and you have an aromatic ring right and the reagents for this reaction are nitric acid, HNO3, right, and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. And you'll basically substitute a hydrogen for a NO2 group. And again, since there, there are no substituents on the aromatic ring to start off with, the NO2 group will will be added to any of the carbons of the aromatic ring it will not discriminate so your result for this reaction I picked this carbon will be an aromatic ring with an NO2 group sticking off of it that's your nitration reaction the next reaction is the sulfonation again I will not be discussing the mechanism for this one sulfonation and for this for this reaction again you have an aromatic ring right you have an aromatic ring the reagents used for this reaction are SO3 and sulfuric acid and the result of this reaction is an aromatic ring with an SO3H group hanging off of it and again it's not going to discriminate since there are no other substituents on the aromatic ring 
in the starting material so it could attach any of the carbons of the aromatic ring so that's your sulfonation reaction now the fourth the fourth reaction that I'll be talking about is the Friedel Crafts alkylation. Let's write that down. Number four. The Friedel Crafts Alkylation. Hopefully that's how you spell it. Friedel Crafts alkylation. Basically aromatic ring right um, a alkyl halide I, for this example for this example I'm picking uh, chlorine as the halogen and again you could use bromine as as the halogen of the alkyl halide and it could be any type of alkyl halide um, it could be a secondary type of alkyl halide uh, you know I mean um, not uh, not a secondary, but I mean, you get the point when I when I explain the mechanism. So you have an alkyl halide. I pick chlorine for this case, and uh, you since you're using chlorine, you'll use AlCl3, and the result of this reaction will be not a propyl group, but uh, not a propyl group hanging off of uh, one of these carbons, but a isopropyl group because we have rearrangement in this reaction. Okay, will be an isopropyl group. So let's let's do the mechan let's uh, let me show the mechanism for this reaction. So if you have your alkyl halide, you have AlCl3. Right? Pair of electrons and the chlorine are going to add into AlCl3. You'll form this carbocation intermediate plus AlCl4 minus. Now, what happens is that since this is a primary carbocation intermediate, recall back to your first semester of organic chemistry the one two hydride shift or the alkyl shifts that's what's going to take place you're going to rearrange to form a more substituted more stable carbocation intermediate and since you have a hydrogen here you have actually two you're going to do a little shift to that position and the result will be a positive charge here and you have a secondary carbocation intermediate. You can't make a tertiary but because there's no possible way in this example. Now, what's going to happen? Follow the same type of steps I've shown you in the halogenation reaction. You have your aromatic ring. Right? You have your aromatic ring. Um, you have this pair of electrons attack here. You'll form a bond there between this carbon, this carbon. The result of this step will be this intermediate. Put a positive charge here, and you have your isopropyl group. Again, it's going to follow the same step in the halogenation. You have an H at this position. You do a elimination reaction to reform and regenerate your aromatic ring. Right? That's the arrow coming from this bond here. And the result of this step is this aromatic ring with an isopropyl group hanging off of it. And there you have it. This is your Friedel Crafts alkylation. Now stay tuned, I'll be discussing the the Friedel Crafts acylation in the next part.